When you think about the American Revolution, technology innovations likely aren't the first thing that come to mind. However, it was during the War for Independence that the world's first submarine attack took place. That's right, you heard me. I said submarine attack. It came about courtesy of one of the first ever submersible warcraft, christened the American Turtle, so named because of how it looked under the water, but really it looked more like a giant acorn. The creation of the turtle is credited to an American inventor and patriot named David Bushnell. Bushnell, born August 30th, 1740 in Westbrook, Connecticut, was originally a farmer, the first of five children born into the Bushnell farming family. After his father's death in 1769, Bushnell left the life of farming by selling his share of the family farm in his early 30s and then entered Yale College where he studied mathematics. While at Yale, Bushnell proved that gunpowder could be exploded underwater. He used this knowledge not only in the construction of the underwater mine, but later in creating floating torpedoes that exploded on contact. When the Revolutionary War finally broke out, Bushnell's submersible was recommended to both General George Washington and Thomas Jefferson by Connecticut Governor Jonathan Trumbull. Jefferson, who was an inventor himself, was intrigued by the possibilities. However, Washington remained skeptical of devoting funds from the Continental Army, which were already spread pretty thin at the time. Ultimately, though, and largely because of Trumbull's influence, Washington provided some money for the Turtles' development. Now, while the idea of the turtle was Bushnell's, he did need to have some assistance in its design, especially for the complex moving parts of the machinery used to propel and steer the craft through the water, as well as what was used to dive and surface the vessel. That help came by way of wealthy New Haven inventor, clockmaker, and brass foundryman Isaac Doolittle. Although the turtle is classified as submarine, obviously it looked nothing like modern subs, and it certainly didn't operate like one. Made of oak with iron wrappings and brass fittings, the turtle was only big enough for a single person to fit inside. And since it was propelled through the water by means of a treadle-driven propeller and hand-operated crank, this meant that it required considerable effort to use, meaning whoever was piloting the craft had to be very physically fit. Visibility was only made possible through porthole windows near the top of the craft and through the hatch on top. The hatch also served as the pilot's only means of exit and entry, as well as the only way that air could get into the turtle. So because of its limited air capacity, traveling underwater would only be done when absolutely necessary. Also, it was intended that the turtle only be used at night to maximize the aspect of stealth, which would be crucial in successfully pulling off any attack against British ships. This obviously presented a serious obstacle in terms of navigation. So to overcome the problem of being able to navigate through dark waters at night, bioluminescent foxfire was attached to the needles of the turtle's compass and other instruments so they could be read in the dark. In terms of weaponry, since the idea behind the turtle was not that it would directly attack an enemy vessel, but rather that it would be used as a means of sabotage and sinking enemy ships, there were no offensive or defensive weapons on the turtle at all only the explosives that were used to attach to the hulls of the enemy ships. Once development was completed, Bushnell tested the turtle in the Connecticut River with his brother as the pilot. Things seemed to go well, and preparations for the turtle's active use got underway until Bushnell's brother fell ill. Now a new pilot would have to be found and trained, which set the project back. Soon afterward, though, three suitable men were found, and the turtle was transported overland through Connecticut to the Hudson River, which was still in American hands. Finally, General Washington gave permission for the turtle's first mission, and the craft was towed to New York Harbor to attack the British fleet. The turtle's target? The Royal Navy's flagship moored off of Governor's Island in New York Harbor, the HMS Eagle. The turtle, piloted by Sergeant Ezra Lee, got underway at 11 o'clock p.m. on September 6, 1776. Unfortunately for Lee, the currents were a lot stronger than he had anticipated, and the darkness made it difficult to navigate, so it took Lee about two hours from launch to get to the Eagle. The turtle was successful in approaching the ship unnoticed. However, Lee's first attempt to secure the explosives to the Eagle by boring a hole in the ship's side failed because it hit a metal plate probably the metal plate used to secure the ship's rudder to the hull. When he tried to make a second attempt, he was unable to keep the turtle submerged and the sub floated to the surface. Realizing that he had failed and that he could be discovered, Lee gave up and headed back. When British soldiers on Governor's Island saw the fleeing sub, 
they immediately rode out towards it. Lee released one of his remaining explosive torpedoes, hoping the soldiers would try to retrieve it. Although they didn't retrieve it as he had hoped, the charge did blow up in the East River, blowing plumes of water and debris sky high. This allowed Lee to narrowly escape. The turtle was used again in another attempt to blow up another British ship on October 5th, but this one failed when the ship's watchmen saw it coming. A few days later, the turtle went down when the ship that carried it was sunk by the British off the New Jersey coast. In retrospect, George Washington wrote in a letter to Thomas Jefferson regarding the turtle, I then thought and still think that it was an effort of genius, but that a combination of too many things were requisite. Now, the legacy of the turtle may seem just like Washington said, a great idea on paper, but not so great in execution. However, that's not entirely the case. In fact, Bushnell's idea of using water as ballast for submerging and raising his submarine is still in use today in modern subs, as well as his screw propeller. Also, there have been two U.S. submarine tenders which bore his namesake. The first USS Bushnell was launched in Bremerton, Washington in 1915 and served during World War I. It was later renamed USS Sumner in 1940 and was present during the attack on Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941. It was further employed as a survey ship during the Second World War and was decommissioned in 1946. The second USS Bushnell submarine tender was launched on September 14, 1942 and served during World War II and later was a flagship of Submarine Squadron 12 in Key West, Florida from 1952 until it was decommissioned in 1970. So although the turtle itself wasn't necessarily instrumental in turning the tide of the war, the idea of this weird little submarine that was created for the American Revolution was, in fact, pretty revolutionary after all. 